Hello everyone, this is Tim, SamY7, and I'm not really sure how I want to do this video. And, <laughs> well, I guess I'm doing it right now, but I'm going to review the AD&D Monster Manual. And this is for first edition. Now, the reason I say I don't know really how to review this is it's a monster manual. There's lots of creatures in it, uh, lots of little pieces of artwork, and I don't really know what to do. I, I was going to try to go through and kind of pick out some of the cool monsters, and as I was going through, I realized that there are a lot of cool monsters in this book. The uh, frequency of abilities that say some simply like, you know, uh, the characters have to save against, you know, a particular threat, and if they don't, they die. <laughs> and there are several monsters that are like that, uh, and not really high hit dice monsters. Um, some of them are, you know, pretty low, and I was, I was kind of impressed by that, and like, that whole, like, Gygaxian flavor to these different monsters was, it was pretty interesting. I thought that was, it, it was kind of refreshing to, to see something that doesn't sort of have that sugar coating that I think you know later later games have there it's definitely it's definitely it has that old school flavor and I've talked before about how I like to dabble in different different types of, of uh, RPGs and old school gaming is something that I'm definitely getting in, in a sort of an acquired taste to um, I've had, heard a lot of people, you know, that they, they don't really get it or they don't like it. Or, what do you mean there's no attack of opportunity? That's dumb. Why would you ever want to play a game without attack of opportunities? Uh, or a focus on miniatures. And, I don't know. I I, I like it. I, I, I sit here and I read this book, and it, it brings back good memories. I had a, a friend as a kid, and he had an older brother. And the, he, the older brother... Uh, played Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and we didn't play at that time. Uh, we were going down a different path with different RPGs, uh, less popular ones, uh, but the ones that I got a hold of and uh, I learned the rules to, and that was uh, Rollmaster, uh, which has you know some negative connotations, but like any RPG, you can take it to your will and just make it a game that you like playing. You know, just house roll the crap out of it until it's something you enjoy. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's a different topic entirely. So the Monster Manual. There are lots of cool illustrations in that old school style in this book. It's I don't even, I can't even show you all of them because they're they're so neat. But some things I did want to go over. Uh, creatures use an attack matrix based on their hit die, which was kind of strange at first. You look when I was looking through the monsters and their description, I was like, uh, you know, what do they add to hit? Or, and I forgot about uh, that. That's not a part of the monster. They're not in there. So that's that's kind of something that hit me right off the bat. Um, and I also noticed there is no uh, there's no real like, you know, stats for some of these monsters. You know, like the traditional six D and D stats. Which I also thought was interesting. Like I, I'm like, wait a minute. There's no strength list unless it's in the description, and um, you have to read the description of all these monsters. I mean, you should read the description in any monster manual, but there are lots of crunchy little details in the descriptions of every monster. So, if you're planning about something, putting something in a, in, a, in the game, you really need to read the whole thing. Um, so yeah, no attack. Uh, you know, like, you know, plus six to attack or whatever from a more modern standpoint, you know, more our modern sensibilities are, you know, it's like, wait, what, that's not there? So that was interesting. Um, the, also, the attack matrix is not in the monster manual. It's in the DMG. So you you obviously need the, the DMG to run a game, but I just thought that was strange that it didn't also put it in the, the monster manual. So that was kind of funny. Um, oh, and the attack matrix, you, re you really just cross-reference hit dice of the creature um, and the AC of the target to try to figure out what they need to roll. 
Um, and it's a little table. It's not really that bad. And I think I kind of prefer that to, to the Thaco. So, I don't know. I just thought that was, that was kind of interesting. Uh, frequency is the likelihood of being encountered. Um, very rare is 4%. Rare is 11. Uncommon is 20%. And common is 65. Uh, the number of peering is the average number of monsters. This is only a guideline. Um, you feel free to add to this number or decrease this number of, of monsters, depending on you know what the party's like and the, their makeup. Um, armor class, uh, obviously lower is better in this case. Um, move, this is something that I'm not real sure of. I looked and it almost looks like the movement is in inches. You know, there's the, the, the two lines, uh, the, you know, the inch mark. And uh, if someone can help me clarify that, if if the movement is in inches in first edition AD and D, I'd really appreciate that because I I, I kind of tried to find things. I haven't read the DMG yet, so maybe it'll tell me in there probably. But if someone can tell me what the little inch marks are, if that's just that's how they did it, uh, they just did everything in inches. Um, guessing that's the case since you know Gygax was from like a, a miniatures game background, but I could be wrong. Um, hit dice is d8s. Um, something interesting about hit dice is that uh, if let's say it's a six hit dice creature, and then it says plus four afterwards, that plus four is you roll six or you know six d8s, and then you add four to the total. So don't think it's like a wait is it six plus four? So was that ten hit dice? No, it's you know six d8 plus four. Um, so that I thought that was fun. Uh, well, interesting. Um, percent in layers, a chance of encountering them, of course. Uh, treasure type uh, refers to a table that's also in the DMG. Um, this can be adjusted, of course, if you think that they should have more, you know, more loot to, to grab. Uh, the number of attacks is the number of basic attacks per round. Um, this doesn't count unusual or special attacks that the monster may have. And those will be listed. Um, there's a little thing that says special attack or special defenses. And you need to look in the description of the monster to see what that is. Uh, damage per attack is pretty simple. Um, if there's none listed, it is damaged by the weapon that they use. So they, you know, whatever the damage for like a sword would be, that's what their damage would be. Um, oh, and that's it, it's interesting. Um, instead of like the dice, you know, nomen, nomenclature that we're used to, you know, like 48, 68, a lot of times they're just it's a range of numbers. And sometimes it's a little tricky to try to figure out what the range is. You know, it'd be like, I don't know. It's like, you know, for a D8, it sometimes lists 1 to 8. That's pretty simple. And some of them are a little funky. Like, it'll give you a strange little, you know, range of numbers, and you have to try to think, okay, is that is that D4s? Is that something else? Um, that's one thing I noticed that was kind of, uh, kind of obscure. Um, like I said, special attacks are listed in the description for the monster. Um, Magic resistance is a percent, ch uh, percent chance of a spell failing um, in the monster's presence. Uh, this is like you know spell failure in later editions. Um, they do have, I think, yeah, intelligence listed to tell you how intelligent the monster is that you're facing. Um, alignment uh, size is only really in small, medium, and large. And large kind of tells you that you know. It, Obviously, dragons are really big, you know, so you kind of have to use some common sense as far as that goes. And then at the very end, it'll tell you a little bit about the psionic abilities um, for every monster. And again, I'm not I'm not used to just having psionics as in the core rules, so that was different. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to that. I've I've always heard psionics are you know a bit broken and they don't always mesh well with magic, and but I don't know. Uh, if there's anyone out there that's ever really played first edition, I haven't. And like I said, this is kind of like a I'm like an old school convert. <laughs> uh, you know, please inform me. You know, uh, I don't know. But that's pretty much what each monster has. Uh, I think I'm gonna go and talk a little bit about more about some of the monsters. Um, I wanted to just go through like there's a lot of monsters in here that don't really need reviewed, like you know bears and horses and things like that. But there's some that are, are very interesting, and they kind of have that first edition, like uh, like some of their descriptions are nice and dark. So, um, all right, check me out in the next video.